Heather. Feather. And today, we are going to dive right into the amazing world of ferrofluid. I bought large plastic petri dishes. Pipettes, magnets, large steel screws, magnetic ball joint ends, and of course, ferrofluid. I have listed everything necessary for you to try this at home in the description box if you want to do this yourself, but for now, sit back, relax, and let's get started. Ferrofluid is awesome. In a basic sense, it's simply a blend of magnetic particles and fluid. It becomes super, super, super strongly magnetized in the presence of a magnetic field, but when there's no magnet to be found, ferrofluid is just chilling, being a liquid, not a care in the world. Ferrofluid was invented in 1963 by NASA's Steve Papel as a liquid rocket fuel. It was originally intended to be drawn toward a pump inlet in outer space, using magnets without clotting. So, we are literally playing with rocket fuel today. How cool is that? Rocket feather burning up your tingles right now. I made a video with ferrofluid uh, a, a long time ago. I'll link it in the description box. But when I did that, it was contained in this uh, pretty glass, uh, almost kind of like a flask. This time, it is not contained. I read that it stains anything it touches, so I took special care to cover all surfaces, including myself, with plastic, or towels, or latex gloves, and even after taking every precaution, I still made the biggest mess, and I still got covered in the stuff, and fun fact, latex gloves do not protect you from ferrofluid. When I took off the gloves, it looked like my fingers had frostbite. They were completely black. I put a magnet in a Ziploc bag, or a plastic baggie, and I put that underneath a large plastic petri dish. I put a large steel screw in the petri dish, and it was immediately attracted to the magnet, so I never worried about it toppling over or being unstable. The magnets are very, very thin, but they are super strong. They're the most macho magnets.
I also put a little magnetic ball joint end on the tip of the screw for a couple experiments. What you're seeing is what happens when I apply ferrofluid to the magnetized screw and ball joint end structure. The fluid creates all these little awesome spikes and when I put too much of it on the top, it eventually spills over and cascades down the screw in a beautiful spiral. The fluid is pulled from the pipette. It doesn't drip down because of gravity. It flows out in the direction of the magnetic pole. So I can hold the pipette next to the structure and the liquid will come out horizontally instead of falling down vertically. The ferrofluid cannot be pushed off the surface of the screw or ball joint end instead of splashing off the surface. I just end up giving the magnetic tower a scalp massage with the pipette. Fluids are colloidal liquids, which means that one substance of microscopically dispersed insoluble particles is suspended throughout another substance. What does that mean? That means that something really small that can't dissolve is hanging out in another helpful substance that gets it around town. It's kind of like sitting in a taxi and the taxi drives it all over the place. You actually interact with or come into contact with colloidal liquids all the time. For instance, milk. Milk is colloidal because it has little, little bits of butter fat hanging out in a water-based solution. Paint, muddy water, whipped cream, Lotions, even your blood, are examples of colloidal liquids. Ferrofluid is made of nanoscale ferromagnetic particles, be it hematite, magnetite, or some compound with iron in it that is suspended in a carrier fluid, usually an organic solvent or water. Each itty bitty particle is coated with a surfactant to inhibit clumping. That just means that it has helped spreading and wetting stuff, as 
as funny as that sounds. Feral fluids usually do not retain magnetization in the absence of an externally applied magnetic field, and thus are classified as super paramagnets rather than ferromagnets. In other words, feral fluids need peer pressure or in-person encouragement in order to behave like a magnet. So, let's Let's pretend that Ferrofluid is a person who really loves cake. I mean, really loves cake. When Ferrofluid is at home watching Netflix, Ferrofluid could not care less about cake. Cake could be prancing around the front yard, strutting its stuff, and Ferrofluid still won't care. Cake could throw little pebbles at Ferrofluid's window and yell sweet nothings up to Ferrofluid in order to get its attention. But Ferrofluid is still like, nah, bro, I'm not interested. Cake can yell, stop watching those Korean soap operas and come eat me. And Ferrofluid is like, don't tell me how to live my life. But, if Cake walks in Ferrofluid's room, Ferrofluid can't help but dive face first into Cake. But once Cake is gone again, Ferrofluid goes right back to binge watching Netflix. True ferrofluids are stable. This means that the solid particles do not separate from the fluid, even in extremely strong magnetic fields. But, over time, as the surfactant breaks down, the particles will agglomerate and will no longer contribute to the fluid's magnetic response. Let's pretend that Ferrofluid is a nerdy music group that sings about magnets. The solid particles and the fluid are inseparable, and they make great music together. But over time, their communication skills break down, the solid particles get clickish, fluid doesn't want to sing about magnets anymore, and they go their separate ways to pursue solo careers. Additionally, high temperatures, specifically starting around the Curie point, or 570 degrees, Celsius will cause ferrofluids to lose their magnetic properties. Ferrofluids are used for more than just really cool visual displays. They are used to form liquid seals around the spinning drive shafts in hard disks. They are used in mechanical engineering because of their friction-reducing capabilities, which I learned about firsthand. If applied to the surface of a strong enough magnet, it can cause the magnet to glide across smooth surfaces with minimal resistance. I didn't know that. I wanted to see what would happen if I applied the ferrofluid directly to the magnets that I was using. And it created the most slippery thing ever. I 
uh, surprised when I saw the magnet trying to escape my petri dish. I couldn't pick it up for the life of me or get any kind of hold on it. When enough ferrofluid was applied to the magnet, it almost became a solid. I could put the tip of the pipette in it, and I could hear it squish, as if I was cutting gelatin, a really tough gelatin. Parafluids can be used as mechanical and aerospace dampers, loudspeakers, and art. There is also the potential for ferrofluids to be used in a variety of ways in the future, such as for spacecraft propulsion, nanosurgery, telescopes, and energy harvesting. I hope that you enjoyed this? I know that I did. Our world and universe is so wondrous to me, and I truly enjoy exploring it with you. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you soon in a new video. Good night. Sleep well. fluids while I was shopping at online. I, I've been doing a lot of last minute holiday shopping. And if you're my friend on Twitter, you might have seen some of the interesting things that I found. Oh god. Uh, perhaps in the I found the ferrofluids on a site called Think Geek, I believe. 